Hello, my name is Russell Toll. Some of the most famous zonotopes close pack to fill n-dimensional space, foremost among which are the hypercubes, or n-cubes. Add to this that zonotopes are routinely regarded as projections of n-cubes into lower s-dimensional spaces. Immediately we wonder... If a single n-cube projects into some certain s-zonotope, then perforce a packed array of such n-cubes projects into a packed array of the s-zonotopes in the s-space? The answer is, briefly, no. If we allow the s-zonotopes to interpenetrate, then the answer is yes. But if we insist the s-zonotopes close pack in the usual sense, the answer is no. Belatedly, we abandon the chimera. We will not obtain unbounded fame by discovering an infinitude of space-filling zonotopes. Alas. Still, one can't help but suspect that there is some great undercurrent of tessellation beneath the surface, as it were, of zonotopes. In this suspicion we are correct. It is possible to fit together, to pack, as dimensional zonotopes, an infinite variety of such zonotopes in a bewildering multiplicity of different patterns or in an equally bewildering lack of pattern. So, the undercurrent of tessellation does exist. It seems to hark back to those homely and humble n-cubes in their remote and higher spaces. Zonotopes and zonotopal tilings seem to insist upon this connection to higher space. Let us specialize now to zonogons and zonohedra, Zonogons, such as ROMs, regular hexagons, regular octagons and decagons, can fill the plane. Trivially, any ROM can fill the plane after the fashion of squares. Zonohedra, such as rhombic hexahedra, hexagonal prisms, or, say, Kepler's rhombic dodecahedron, or his rhombic triacontahedron, can fill our three-space. Trivially, any rhombic hexahedron can fill space after the fashion of cubes. Of course, in both these assertions, I mean that, generally, mixtures of different zonagons, mixtures of different zonohedra, fill the plane or fill the three-space. Fine, fine, but how do we construct such tilings, such tessellations, such space fillings? Well, we can use the generalized dual method. The method relies upon a sort of duality between arrangements of lines and tilings of zonagons between arrangements of planes and tilings of zonohedra. The method itself is fascinating, but I cannot pause to examine the method here. Here I only wish to call attention to a blurring of the boundary between dimensions. Suppose a plane tiling were to put on airs and struggle into the third dimension. Oh, it sounds silly. It is silly. But zonogonal tilings do so struggle, and moreover, they succeed. Such startling behavior is not at all trivial. It would be trivial to take a tessellation of hexagons, say, and erect a prism on each hexagon, or we could take some wild tessellation of seventy-seven different types of zonagon and erect a prism upon each and every one. Big deal. Our plane tiling has entered higher space. What is decidedly not trivial is that, given a tiling of zonagons, such that all of them are ROMs, or parallelograms, but I prefer to speak of ROMs. That is, given a rhombic tiling, we can reconstruct it often in many ways, so that it remains a rhombic tiling. The ROMs all meet edge to edge, only two to an edge, but it also ripples up and down and no longer lies in a plane. Such rippling up and down rhombic surfaces not only resemble the visible exterior part of some vast and peculiar space filling by three-dimensional rhombic zonohedra, we can, without exception, obtain the identical rhombic services from such solid tessellations. Yet we never need to invoke the more cumbersome generalized dual method for three dimensions, never need to make an arrangement of planes and record the signs of a thousand four-by-four four determinants, we need only the 2D method. We feed it an arrangement of lines, such that no more than two intersect at any single point. This ensures that the output is a rhombic tiling.
Then it only remains to reconstruct this tiling in the third dimension. The original adjacency is perfectly preserved. If ROM X met ROM Y along some single edge in the plane, the two will share that same edge, albeit transformed, in the third dimension. The trick is to dive into the heart of the generalized dual method, and at just that place where the method makes the tiling, add a third component, a Z component, to each vector in the suite of vectors which determine the ROMs in the tiling. So we take vectors in the form of x, comma, y, and make them x, comma, y, comma, z. It is almost surpassingly strange that we are entirely free at this exact point in the method, entirely free to make the vector point up or point down, to vary its slope at will, and yet somehow, some way, the ROMs still all fit perfectly together. Thank you very much.